Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Morning, and thank you for coming back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, we got Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Don't know what to do with himself. He said he was retiring, but of course he came out of retirement. And Giselle is mad as hell. Okay? Giselle is mad as hell. Because from my understanding, they had this pact that he would retire. And then he would have to watch out for the kids more so than her. While she goes on and do her modeling gig or whatever she felt she needed to do. Because she held her husband down. For so many years that he got a chance to play and make money with something he likes to do, loves to do, however you see it. <clears throat> she had the babies and put her career to the side. And now she wants to come in the limelight and he take a back seat. But he reneged on that, y'all. He reneged. He said, mm-mm. I don't been with these kids all day long. And if this is what you had to go through, I'm sorry, baby. I need to buy you a Rolls Royce. But I think I want to play football. Can you hold it down again for me? Just a little bit longer. And she said to the no, no, no. Hell no. That's what she said. No. No. I cannot put my life on hold. While you be in the limelight, out of the limelight. You retiring. You're going back. You're retiring. You're going back. No, this is not a back and forth situation. Okay? We made a pact. We agreed. <coughs> I did my part. Now, you trying to renege on your part? No, that's not going to happen, baby. That's not going to happen, boo-boo. But it's sad to see that they're getting a divorce. It, it really is sad. I hate when people join together into a union, and for whatever reason, they feel like um, it's not working for me anymore. One person has grown. The other person is still at the same place. Or gotten worse or <sighs> something just like what's going on with them if I heard the T correctly she wanted to do something with her life other than being a mom she's very uh, pretty she definitely can model she has a good uh, we call it appearance she has the look of a model she has a body of a model um, but um she said, enough is enough is enough. I can't go on. I cannot go on no more now, honey. Now you're going to fix it or I got to split it. That's what she said, fix or split. Which one do you want? I can serve you up either one of them, okay? But baby girl, she wasn't, she wasn't feeling it no more. She said, mm-mm, I'm not feeling him. He lied to me. He said this, that, and the third. She probably called her mama. She probably called her best friends. She probably called the uh, coach. <laughs> she probably calling Jesus at this point. Like, Lord, I don't want to leave my husband. But he reneged. He lied big time. And I just can't get over it. I just can't get over it. Ain't no counselor. Ain't nothing going to uh, make me feel any different than what I feel about this situation. So I guess, yes, we must go our separate ways. We got the divorce. But okay, you heard my scenario or what I felt about it. I haven't read the story. I'm going to be here with you all narrating it. We're going to take sidebars. We're going to pause for the calls and try to um, understand what we're being uh, led to believe in this article that uh, Sarah Nathan and Emily Smith wrote up for us. Yes, they're independent contractors, I'm guessing, um, for page six. They write stories for um, their employer or whatnot. And we're getting it from their eyesight, okay? Their ears hearing, okay? So, they titled it Tom Brady, Giselle Bun Bungeon, wait a minute, Bungeon, Bungeon, Hired Divorce Lawyers, Admit Marital Wars, Woes, and Sources, okay? Now, I don't know if anybody would cheat, because like I said, I'm going to be narrating 
the uh, article with you all and we can just come up and do some deducing, some adding, some subtracting, and we can come up with a theory. Okay, because that's all it is. Speculation, our theories of logic that we're weighing in on this particular topic of conversation. But let's go on in now. It says Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchen seem to be headed for the end zone. Both have retained divorce lawyers. Multiple sources tell page six exclusively. As previously revealed, the couple has been living separately for the past couple of months following an epic fight. And they're now apparently looking at dividing up their multi-million dollar empire. I never actually thought this argument would be the end of them, but it looks like it is. One source in the no uh, tells page six. I don't think there will be any coming back now. They both have lawyers and are looking at what a split will entail. Who gets what and what the finances will be. Okay. Reps for Brady and Bunchen did not respond to uh, requests for comment. Okay. Mm -mm. Insiders close to the seven-time Super Bowl champ, 45, and the Supermodel, 42, who have been married since 2009, say both are very involved in their children's lives and would share joint custody in separation, if any separation. Um, but that's, that's giving us hope there, right? Because it said if any separation may happen. And just because you get lawyers and all that into the, the, the seed of things, you know what I'm saying, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get divorced, okay? We we can, we can have high hopes for them to stay together, but, you know, it just is what it is at the end of the day. And if everybody's on different pages of a book that we're trying to read, you're going to have chaos. <coughs> okay? So we have, uh, let me see. They share son Benjamin, 12, and daughter Vivian, 9, and Brady is also the father of son Jack, 15, with ex Bridget Mo Monahan. Okay, the couple would likely file for divorce in Florida, as that's where they primarily they are primarily based. Legal experts say another source who knows the couple confirmed that they are looking at dividing their assets, which includes a tw uh, twenty-six million property portfolio. Brady is the highest paid NFL player at two hundred and fifty million, with endorsement deals including LTX, Hertz, Brady brand. Autograph and TB12. As page six first reported in December of 2020, their most recent property purchase was a $17 million home on Indian Creek Island in Miami, nicknamed Billionaire's Bunker. They plan to knock down the 5,172 square foot five bedroom mansion on the two acre lot and build a new one. Both work has recently stalled on the property amid the marital fallout. The couple also own a condo at 70 Vista Street in Tribeca, valued at $3.6 million, as well as $5.7 million property at developer Mike Melsman Yellowstone Club in Montana. Bunchen's favorite property is believed to be their remote home on the Nicoa Women. Oh, Lord. Pensola, okay. Nicolia Pensola in Costa Rica, where the family often vacations. Okay, ahead of uh, Hurricane Ian, the Pope, oh, the pair both uh, fled Tampa, where Brady is playing for the Buccaneers, and went to Miami, where they have been staying apart. Bunchkin has been spotted there over the past few days. A source told us that Bunchen have been staying in the Miami home that she and Brady rented in 2020. It's not clear where the quarterback was holed up. Okay. All the resources close to uh, Bunchen has stressed that it is sexiest to stay to say the split is over. <coughs> the model's issues with Brady reunited on his NFL retirement. The source in the note says, as with many marriages, it's not just one thing. Giselle has, has made it very clear that she worried about Tom playing football and that they had had many talks about it. Okay? But they had, but they have had a series of blow-ups 
over the past few years. And this time, it looks like there is no going back. Okay, well, no don't mean not ever, 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 ever. Because they still have all this money tied up into property. Meaning everything is not liquid. Where they, you know, it was fluid and they could just, you know, get the cash out of it and run. Now all stuff has to be sold. So they don't really have no liquid access that somebody can definitely partake of it at their will. Okay, things have to be sold. Things have to be measured out and all this, that, and the third. That's why I said, you know, how the day's world is now, it seems like... Um, when you get married and you start acquiring things like assets, wealth, <laughs> you need to be trying to have that same scenario when y'all going around here buying all these different property, getting all these cars. Okay, this is what we're going to put in our estate trust. If we stay married this long length of time, whoever is the offending party, they get this and not that. Uh, if, you know, we had to split up, you get that Mercedes. I get the Land Rover. Okay, we just you just have to do stuff like that these days. So everybody be on one accord so they'll know, well, <clears throat> if I mess up, this these are the list of things that I got coming to me. But if I stay with him or her, then we have it jointly. <clears throat> but I like this other person over here, and they tickling my fancy, and I want to be there. And you start looking at the side where this is the stuff you acquired, and this is the stuff um, you both agreed on that would be mine if we had to definitely hit the road, Jack. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm leaving you. I'm going to be with this other person. But this is, uh, you know, we already settled this. Every time we got a piece of property or we got some assets going on that can be divided up. If we ever got a divorce, I already got my list that I was supposed to have this. And you got your list of what you say you want to have. So it would not be a big discussion. Why people just don't think in those terms? I don't understand. Because that's where I would have to go. That's exactly where I had to go if I ever got married again. You know what I'm saying? It might be a beautiful thing. Probably was sent for God. And now we really need it. You know what I'm saying? But just in case, just in case, I would like to have something on paper. On paper, baby. But, okay. Now it's time for you, the fam. Sam, tell me what you thought about this situation. It seems like everybody is passing out divorces. You get a divorce. I got a divorce. Everybody get a divorce all the way around here. Is this a sad state of how a uh, family is going to be disheartened? It's going to be interrupted with having one parent all the time, and then you go see the other parent here and there in holidays. Is this what marriage has come to? And I think I can stay with a firmly sound answer. Yes, because you know what? When you sit there and invite sin in, when you sit there and call yourself going to give up the milk before you get residence and a title called Mrs., this is the shit you got to deal with. Okay, nobody wants to get married no more. They don't want to suffer and go through the bad to get to the good or get the good and it has to go bad. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody want to do that no more. They're like, well, what, what's the easy thing I can get out of him? I don't like this person. So if I cheat or if I steal... Which one would be detrimental that would get me out of this marriage? You know what I'm saying? Nobody takes marriage serious anymore. It's just like, okay, I, I, I've been with you 12, 20 years, 12 to 20 years, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of looking at you and all like that. Well, hell, move to the next floor. <laughs> if you got a tri-level house or a, a two-level house, just tell the heifer to move to the next floor. Then you wouldn't have to see me. You wouldn't have to uh, be by me. You don't have to even look to see if I'm, you could smell me coming, you know what I'm saying, because they know your fragrance, they know your per perfume, you know, the scent that you are, you don't even have to look my way, you, yeah, I remember the movie called, uh, The War of the Roses, I forget who it was starring in it, but I caught that one little, um, movie, back in the, it was back in the day, It's it's been probably 10 plus years, but, they was tearing that damn house up. They were gonna either kill each other, they gonna mess up the whole house and all the assets. Okay, that was a that was a hot oh that was a hot mess. But I love that movie. Oh yes, I did. Because they were just showing each other how much they truly, truly loved them. I mean, they loved each other to death, and they sure were going to that death situation. If anybody know the movie, check it out. It's very 
it's, it's very holistic in a sense because you work out some anger. And, you know, I ain't going to say you need to be trying to excommunicate them, put them in the ground and let the uh, the weeds and the flowers grow up from their, you know, their body parts or their, you know, the liquid and stuff, how a, a body dissolves itself. Yeah, but honey, some, I think you need to look at the water roses. Like at least five years into your marriage and see if that's, you know, is it something that you're thinking about doing or whatnot? Because I know people just don't go in marriage to think about getting out of marriage. It has to be something. You don't fell out of love with them because you just don't like looking at them no more. <laughs> you be like, damn, you still here? You know? Ah. Or it could be a, a, a thing of infidelity, you know? And to me, that's the, that's the, ooh, honey, that's it. You you did that to me. I don't got nothing else for you. Because, you know, we live on the truth of having communication. Communication is a great thing when you are in a marriage, you know. Then what's getting on your nerves with that other person or what that person not doing or should be doing? Get it out. You know what I'm saying? Don't let it fester and build up. And then once y'all have one little spat, everything come out. Like you don't bust open like you're a volcano. It is just smearing all your lava everywhere. And you didn't know you were that bad until that person that you were living with, that you married, had kids with. They tell you how awful you are. Because <laughs> I tell you, you don't know a person until you get the marriage sign where it has both of y'all signatures. Then for some ungodly reason, the real person come out. I mean, you can live with a person. They still be straight up do a little things that you may not really typically like, but you can put up with. Girl, make sure you get that license signed with both parties have the initials on there and the signatures. It's like you don't dug their grave. I don't know what it is. I really, really don't. But I don't, it's, it's, I feel like men and women, they get into it, they play house, and then when they've gone so many years together, they feel like, ah, I just don't want to be, I don't want to be here. You know, I want to go have a, a affair. Or they might just have an affair and don't let you in on it. But then you find out, because see, everything done in the dark, that's uh, vicious and, and just, um, just horrific, it's going to come out. And nine times out of ten, it's going to come out in a way you don't want it to be shown. But it just is what it is. And, you know, because, I don't know, it's, it's the season of divorces or it's just the season of people just giving up on uh, the, their loved one, the ones that said they were going to be there through sickness and health, through death, through a part, you know. It's like they're not waiting. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say because I'm like, Woo, child, that's just too much going on. And if it was true that um, Brady actually had committed to staying at home, being retired, playing golf every day, you know, looking up another type of um, revenue stream he can put out there other than playing football, you know what I'm saying? So his wife could do something she wanted to do that she waited on him to do because he had, he had retired before and he came back. And then he did shit again. So I'm like, baby girl, he just want to play football until he can't no more. I mean, the organization is going to have to throw him out. He ain't going to need to be retired. They're going to have to throw his behind out. Whether he's having, you know, those uh, head butts or, you know, things with his head seizures and stuff. Or, you know, he just got too many broken bones that he has bad arthritis going on there. But since if he's not having either one of those issues... The, boy, the man just like playing sports. And he just, you know, he ain't no good at raising children. That's why he felt he had you there. And he would just lavish you with everything as far as luxury and, and uh, materialistic stuff. That he thought he could keep you in that motherly role. And you just pay, you know, play the homemaker. But it seems like uh, that's not what you wanted to do. You wanted to pick up uh and get your life flourishing because you know you might feel insecure you might feel like you're not doing anything being a mom is great being a wife is wonderful but it's just something you need in you to um be able to be whole again so i quick i quietly i quite understand your plight uh giselle but brady's not listening to you okay brady's not listening and i'm pretty sure you don't told him more than a time or two of what you wanted to do he just you know just shunned you pretty much and he just did what any other unthoughtful unkind unwilling cheater man would do think of himself first and not 
you. Okay, because first you would have God, then you would have him, and then you would have the family. But since he's not acting right, we ain't going to even put him in the religious state of mind of thinking of what's biblically sound and what's biblically right. You understand what I'm saying? But okay, now I want to hear from my family. I want y'all to get in those comments to tell me what y'all thought about this uh, subject, subject topic. What's going on in the world of matrimony? Is everybody making a mockery out of it and feel like, oh, we just drunk. We got married, but we was under an influence. We know what the hell we were doing for the last 20 years, 15 years, 12 years. Now we want out. But, you know, like I said, hmm, sad thing. It's sad for the kids, especially if the kids are used to having both parents under one roof and they going about their daily lives, living the perfect dream, uh, the look of a perfect dream of a family but that's all i got ain't got no more and i will see y'all on the next video bye bye